Good morning, Floss Tubers. Today's Thursday, October the 24th, 2019. And today I'm coming to you from my stitching chair in the living room. This is where I sit and stitch in the evenings, um, either cross stitch or hand quilts while we're watching television. So I just wanted to jump on and um, share what's been going on in my stitching life. I finally got um, my Sew and Love block of the month done before the quilt show that we had this past weekend. So I'm finally able to jump into some other projects that have been neglected since I've been working on that. And let's see, that is it on the sofa behind me. And then um, that was one of my larger um, pieces that I entered in the show. And then I also entered that little snowman quilt that's next to it. And I also entered that, um, the wall hanging right there. As well as two other wall hangings. Um, and those both one ribbons, the um, two wall hangings that, I'm sorry, they're hanging in other rooms and I need my husband to get them down and he just put them back up from the show. So, um, I won't show those maybe in a future one when I take them down to clean them or something. Anyway, um, that quilt show was a lot of fun and I'm always inspired to see um, what our local small group um, accomplishes. A lot of talented ladies and I'm very blessed to have them be, uh, be surrounded by them. Okay, so, um, at the quilt show, I did a um, demo on uh, planning and organizing a quilt project. And in a future Floss Tube, I will, um, I think I'll share that with you guys. Um, I like to plan and organize and um, just have a few little, few little tips and tricks and some forms also to share. Um, I've been having forms that I made to uh, keep track of my quilting projects, but I also am currently working on one for cross stitch. So um, that'll be something that I will um, freely share with you guys. Um, upload them and then you can download them and use them if you'd like. Um, so I have a little trying to get a little bit more organized with my floss tubes, just um, sort of have a list of things that I wanna talk about. So um, the first thing is some previous stitching. Um, I haven't really, I mean, I cross stitched years ago and I did, you know, I did a good bit of items, but most of them I gave them away. But one that I didn't give away is, probably my favorite and uh, I did this for my husband and it says the best thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother and um, it fell I don't know years ago and um, the glass broke on it so it's you know dirty and has spots on it and stuff but I have it hanging in the little mudroom area above where my husband you know when he comes home from work puts his wallet and keys and change in his pocket and stuff I have it hanging above there but um, it honestly is really my favorite I just think it's so cute I was very into teddy bears um, back in the day <laughs> when I was stitching before and um, we only have um, two daughters, but we did, um, I did miscarry before our first was born, so I like that that um, third child that we have not met yet is represented in this piece. And there's no date uh, on it, but it was probably in the late 80s, early 90s that this was stitched. Okay, um, I finished something last night. 
actually finished a project. Not fully finished, but finished the stitching. And that is the um, the harvest jar, which I had you know finished when I showed you in my last video. But last night I finished the small. And um, when I was stitching this and was about right here on the yellow flower, I actually ran out of the queen bee floss. And so I had to halt everything and order more from Fat Quarter Shop. But um, I thought it was pretty cool that like the night after I ran out, the next day I had a 15% off thread coupon in my email from them. So <laughs> I was able to get my queen bee and get a few more little pieces of thread that I need for upcoming projects. But um, if you don't know, this is a um, collaboration between Priscilla Blaine, who does the chalk art, and um, Kathy Haberman at Hands On Design. And I've signed up for the chalk full um, club through Fat Quarter Shop, which comes out um, every other month so that's um, that's done and I did pick up some fabric at um, Walmart the other day to finish it um, don't have any idea exactly what I'm gonna do yet um, I mean I really like the way Kathy did hers just in the basic um, frame from Hobby Lobby with the little um, What's that little thing called at the top? Um, the little clamp, I don't know what you call it. But anyway, I don't know if I'll do it exactly like that, but I do know that I want to have several layers of fabric around it. So yay! Always good when we finish something. Okay, um, now, on to my whips, what I'm working on now. Um, I'm going to start off with the stuff that I'm working on quilting-wise. Um, so, I just finished. I'm a little behind because I've been working on the Sew and Love block of the month, but this is the Goodness Grows um, pattern that's in the um, Sew Sampler bo box. Um, in April every year is the anniversary of Sew Sampler and they um, start over with a new block of the month. So this was the first year that like I actually started at the big, you know, was part of it in April. So um, I bought the kit and everything. But this is block five. Um, and then I've got some of the previous blocks. And this is sort of how I store my... Um, my blocks, so I'm working on block of the month. Um, and these are designed by Corey Yoder, and I absolutely adore them. So cute. And this is with her strawberry jam fabric. So I got that done. And then I also finally got to start on the Project Linus Mystery Quilt and made the first clue, which is the bear paw. And I'm doing just the, the small um, version. There's a small and a large choice in the pattern, and I'm doing just the small one. Um, so I just had to make three of these. All right, um, I showed this last time and I don't really, I don't know if I've gotten any progress, made any progress on it, but this is the Love My Stitching Bag, um, which is right here. This is a collaboration between um, So Much to Love and um, Kathy Haberman again at Hands On Design. Love her stuff. So... Maybe I've gotten a little bit more done. I really don't remember how far I was. I'm changing the colors up to be pinks and purples since those are my favorite colors. And I 
Then there is the Boo Jar, um, which I haven't actually started. I just have started getting it ready. But this is the pattern. And these are the flosses. And then it's done on um, 14 count um, Ada chalkboard black. Um, so when I got the fabric that I'm using on the uh, Love My Stitching bag, the Lugana, um, I was amazed at how soft it was because I've always only, except for one project, only used Ada, which is usually, you know, it's pretty stiff. But I did see online where someone said that they um, soak their Ada or just sort of rinse it out like two or three times to get the sizing out, and it did really make a difference. I mean, it's still, it's still stiffer than the Lugana, but it's a lot softer than how it comes. Um, but uh, one thing I wanted to share just with this one um, that Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop does. So uh, once she figures out what the finished size of her piece is going to be, then she cuts out a piece of paper, and I'm, I mean, this is not how big it's gonna be, but just pretend that it is. So she'd cut out a piece of paper the size of what the finished project's gonna be. And then that's sort of how she knows, you know, she can place it on here and she'll know where she needs to start, you know, put it however far in she wants it to be away from the edge. And then that gives her her starting spot for the edge of the design. And I really like that idea. It takes away the guesswork of making sure you have enough cloth. So um, I'll probably start that. I might start that tonight. Even though I know I won't finish it for this Halloween. I'll have it for next year. Let's see. Okay. And then the other one that I'm working on is right here. Is... Um, the Patchwork Autumn by Jardin Privé. And I'm changing up some of the colors. The little, um, this color on the border and then this color right here that the little squirrel is done in. So for those, I am using some of the, the Sulky um, Blendables Cotton Petites 12 weight. I had gotten these for um, my big stitch quilting that I do a lot. And um, then I found out that you could use them for cross stitch. And I was like, oh, nice. So... I pulled those out and I'm using those on that pattern. So I'm stitching that on. Let's see. Um, 28 count Monaco tea dyed. Um, this will take me right into my haul. Um, that pattern, the um, Patchwork Autumn as part of my haul um, from Fat Quarter Shop. But I also got um, this fabric. It's a, um, how big is it? 20 by 24 inch piece. Um, I also got this little stitching bag for um, to hold it in. And this is the... Um, the Bloomtopia, um, which is going to be a stitch along that will start in February through Fat Quarter Shop. It's a fundraiser, part of a fundraiser that they do for um, the Make-A-Wish Foundation of, I think it's Central and South Texas. Central and I don't remember exactly where, but anyway, it benefits Make-A-Wish. Um, but this is the, the project bag. And then I also got the thread pack 
and I used my 15% off coupon that I got to purchase these. Aren't they beautiful? Um, if you don't know about the pattern, it's um, they have a blog post about it on the Jolly Jabber and the pattern is just beautiful, gorgeous. Okay. Um, and I also got the uh, Jardin Privé uh, Quaker de Noel. De Noel. Um, isn't that just beautiful? And I think it calls for it says Nina's threads and wine. Um, I just got some classic color works Razzleberry to do it in, which may be a little too well, a little too pinky purpley. But I mean, in my world, you can't have that, so <laughs> I won't say that officially. But it just may be a little different than what the uh, call for color is, but it's okay. Um, that's just sort of a good project to have when um, you don't want to have to do color changes. It's all one solid color. And I was at Walmart the other day, sort of just looking around in the Christmas stuff, and I found this little star plaque, um, which I figured I... I don't know, I may do the um, the Chicken Joy pattern that uh, Priscilla and Chelsea of the Real House Housewives of Cross Stitch gave away. Um, I may use it for that, I'm not sure, but I just thought it was, it'll, it'll be used in some way to finish a Cross Stitch project. Oh, and I also got um, for the for this pattern, I got this fabric, which is um, 28 count um, Carolina linen in sand. And I also got some quilting stuff. So they, uh, Fat Quarter Shop has recently done a little tutorial on using Lori Holt's crazy quilt papers and the, the one that they used, the um, material that they used in their tutorial was her Granny Chic fabric and um, OMG, it's just gorgeous. How cute is that? So that's going to be an upcoming project. And then they've also um, got these log cabin papers that they've started selling. This is the six inch block. And I love Log Cabin. That's like my favorite, all-time favorite quilting pattern. And for that, I'm going to use this um, Sugar Creek by Cory Yoder Layer Cake. Oh. You see a little snippet of them. Beautiful. I love her. I love, I love her, basically. Anything she designs, and she's just adorable. All right, so that's my haul. Um, and I've been discovering some other floss tube channels. Um, you know, you watch one and then they mention all these other ones and you've got to go watch them and before you know it, you're subscribed to 13. Um, 
but um, Brenda and the Cereal Starter is one that I absolutely love. Um, they are a hoot, and they're very into samplers. Um, I'm not particularly into samplers, but man, they're sort of turning my head with some of the stuff that they've been sharing. Um, and they have these rules that these rules that they, you know, say that we have to follow, which is pretty funny. It's, I mean, it's tongue in cheek, but they were one of the ones that, um, said that you should have a, uh, always have a, um, a, a red sampler going. <laughs> so that was sort of my, uh, impetus for buying the, um, that Quaker Christmas one. Um, then there's the Kindred Stitcher, and um, she, I think she makes bags to sell, um, but just makes gorgeous bags, but she, I mean, she has a lot of beautiful stitching to share, too. Um, then one that was just mentioned this week in uh, Fat Quarter Shops Floss Tube is Jan Hicks Creates, and uh, I'm just watch, actually watching hers, was watching hers this morning, and she's shared some really beautiful things. Um, then there's Vana, the Twisted Stitcher. Um, she has some amazing um, finishing tutorials on her channel, so be sure to check her out. Um, and then there's uh, Nicola Parkman of Hands Across the Sea Samplers. Um, she's in Cornwall, England. And um, she shared, you know, video of the outside of her um, home. And it's just like looking at a scene from Paul Dart series. If you watch Paul Dart, I love Paul Dart, but um, just beautiful scenery. But anyway, um, she has a lot of neat little um, tips and tricks. And one thing that she shared about that uh, I wanted to share with you just to, you know, go look at her channel and um, watch the video on doing a pin stitch to start and stop. So um, I like it for starting. I'm not crazy about using it for stopping my stitching, so I still will weave the thread on the back side. But for starting it, I love it because you start from the front of the work and you do this little stitch that is hid by your cross stitch, it's under it and you can't see it. Um, you don't have to flip over, you don't have to hold the thread in place to stitch over it or anything like that. Um, and when you're using, you know, hand-dyed threads, which I'm using more of lately, um, you can't do the loop method. So, um, really like that, check that out. Um, so, I'm new to the, you know, making videos and editing videos. I don't really know anything about editing or um, any of the technical things. I am learning. I found a channel on YouTube that I'm learning from. But um, anyway, yesterday I shot a tour of my craft cave and um, I have no idea how to attach it to the end of this video. So I'm going to do, this will be floss tube number two, part A that you're listening to right now. And then um, I will upload the tour of my craft cave um, as floss tube number two, part B. So that's it guys, that's what's going on with me and um, happy stitching, bye.